can still remember the moment I found out Ronnie James Dio died and the impact it had on me. I was 14 and just starting to get into his music when I found out that he had stomach cancer and on May 16, 2010, he had passed away. Now that he was gone, I wanted to know everything about him and I tried to find every song I could buy. His death was tragic for me, but it was an important event in my life. It sparked my obsession with Black Sabbath and I started learning how to play guitar because I wanted to be a rock star like him. The untimely deaths of our favorite musicians can be heartbreaking, but can also give their music new meaning and purpose for us. Black Sabbath and Ronnie James Dio may have been the reason I first picked up a guitar, but I would be lying if I said that I'd never tried to play guitar like Jimi Hendrix, and so would every other guitar player. Jimi Hendrix is undeniably the greatest guitarist who have ever lived. He was a shy person but came alive like no other on stage, and played his guitar like no one had thought of before. Nevertheless, before Jimmy was setting his guitar on fire and touring across America destroying the eardrums of anyone who went to one of his shows, he was a dirt poor musician playing in a segregated band to all black audiences. He played in several R&B bands during the mid-1960s, including Little Richard's touring band, but he was not satisfied with this. He wanted to be making his own music, not playing someone else's, but he struggled to make a living wage when he tried to form his own band. By the end of 1966, Jimmy's talent had been discovered, and he was taken to London where the Jimi Hendrix Experience was formed. The band only released three albums in their short four-year career, but rock music would never be the same. Jimi Hendrix changed the way people played guitar and how music was recorded. Jimmy was one of the important figures in the hippie movement, and experimenting with drugs is part of what inspired his sound, but it also led to his premature death. He died from a massive overdose of barbiturates, which caused him to choke on his vomit in his sleep. By the time Hendrix graced the stage at Woodstock in 1969 playing the Star Spangled Banner as had never been played before, he was the highest paid musician in the world. He came a long way from the small R&B clubs he played in just a few years earlier, and his legacy helped pave the way for black musicians to achieve the same respect and fame as white performers. On the 5th of December in 1791, the world lost one of its most widely admired musical forces of the time. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart was an accomplished pianist and violinist by the age of five. His prodigious ability propelled him straight into stardom, allowing him the chance to play for the royal family of Salzburg, Vienna. Mozart failed to maintain a steady position as a composer, performer, or music instructor for the royal court however, as he was never content with following their rules. Mozart could be described as a diva. He was choosy in the commissions he would take, though he practically lived in poverty at the height of his career and had a wife and children to think of. We often remember Mozart today for the symphonies, operas, and concertos he composed. We are exposed to some of these great works in the music appreciation courses we take while we're in school. As a music industry major, I have studied Mozart intensely in several different classes, and I have developed much love and appreciation for classical music during my years as a student at Oneana. Though we consider Mozart's works to be classical art music, separate from the pop genres we enjoy today, Mozart provided the pop music of his day, which he composed specifically for the growing middle class all across Europe. Mozart even partied like a rock star, drinking late into the night with friends and admirers, despite his financial circumstances. The irony of Mozart's death at the age of 35 was that he was composing a requiem as he was ill on his deathbed. A requiem is a piece of music used for the Roman Catholic Mass for the dead. All of his energy was put into composing this work in the weeks leading up to his death. Mozart may have composed over 600 musical works in his life, but his fans today ask the question, what more could Mozart have provided us if it were not for his untimely death? This same comment could be made in regards to Kurt Cobain. Cobain and his compadres in Nirvana were forced into the spotlight very early on in their career. With the 1991 hit, Smells Like Teen Spirit, from their second studio album, Nevermind, the band saw a great increase in the size of the crowds they played for, as well as camera flashes that followed their every move. Cobain in particular was subject to his personal issues being broadcasted by the media, 
and felt that the public did not understand his artistic vision. During this time, Cobain suffered from an addiction to heroin as well as depression, both of which are believed to have been escalated by his marriage to Courtney Love. Cobain could not deal with his newly acquired fame, and he was found dead in his Seattle home on April 8, 1994, at 27 years of age. It was determined that Cobain had committed suicide by bullet wound to the head. Prior to the premature death of Kurt Cobain, Nirvana only ever released three studio albums between 1987 and 1994. Nirvana was the band that popularized the grunge genre, bringing the sound to mainstream audiences. They brought rock back onto the popular radio stations that had been plagued by 80s pop for so long. The grunge movement itself, once underground and local to the Seattle area prior to the success of Nevermind, was beginning to greet death following Cobain's passing. It was, re it was replaced by a happier, more carefree sound offered by pop-punk groups like Blink-182 and Green Day. I discovered Nirvana after having been engrossed in the pop-punk sound throughout my teenage years. Nirvana was heavier, darker music. I could turn to it in moments of frustration and stress. I only became aware that Kurt Cobain had committed suicide well after I started listening to the band which really made the music more sincere to me in that his struggles, described in his lyrics, were not artificial. His death gave Nirvana's legacy its lasting power. There are many more musicians whose legacies continue to survive despite their untimely deaths. Many of these artists achieved a greater level of fame posthumously, even as a result of their departure. The influence of the work left behind by dead musicians will inspire future generations of artists and will have an impact on the lives of those who love music.